So this evening, Books and Books is thrilled to welcome back Ms. Meg Cabot, presenting her new novel, Royal Wedding. Ms. Cabot is a number one New York Times bestselling author of books for both adults and teens. There have been over 25 million copies of Meg's nearly 80 published books sold in 38 countries. You are, of course, all familiar with the best-selling Princess Diaries series. And now, Meg brings us the very first adult installment, which follows Princess Mia and her Prince Charming as they plan their fairy tale wedding. Here to tell us more about it, please give a very warm welcome to Ms. Meg Cabot. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for that. It was very sweet. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you so much, those of you who are wearing your tiaras. You know, there aren't a lot of opportunities in life to wear your tiara in public. So this is one of them. When you uh, come to a Meg Cabot signing, you are always encouraged to wear your tiara. I'm wearing mine. Some of yours are actually much nicer than mine, so I'm a little jealous right now. Um, I usually like to ask the oh, yours is very nice back there. I usually like to ask the audience to name the occasions when it's all right to wear your tiara in public. But I pretty much blew the ending of that one, which is obviously when you come to see me. Um, some of the other ones we can just go over in case any of you need to know. Birthdays, obviously. Prom. When you come to see my cabot. <laughs> and what's the big one? Thank you, yes. When you are having your royal wedding, or not royal, but really it's okay to wear a tiara any day. Um, so yes, my new book is Royal Wedding. That is the one we're here to talk about today. There's another book too that we can also talk about, but I don't see a copy of it right now, but maybe one of you have it and you can pass it to me. Um, yes, I, I see a guilty party right here who happens to be wearing a tiara. So we're also going to talk about this one because, um, some of the characters, actually all the characters from both of these books are in, um, the same book, so we'll talk about both of them. But um, this first book, I just want to talk about kind of how I came up with the idea, and then if you um, have questions, I will also be taking questions. And then we'll, we'll do a little quick signing. But um, some of you may know that in the year 2000, the robots took over. No, I'm kidding. Uh, that's, that's an inside joke. Okay. In the year 2000, the first book in this series, that's actually not true. It was actually kind of like the year 1999. But it's, this is really the um, 15th anniversary of this book series, um, The Princess Diaries. And oh, this right? It was the year 2000. This book, I'm sorry. I'm in Miami. I've been having a really good time. It's really <laughs> fun here. Um, I only came a few, uh, really like 150 miles up from Key West, so it's a lot like Key West, but bigger and more exciting. Um, so I was thinking, you know, now it's the, really the 15th anniversary of the first book in this series, and I, you know, I kind of ended it uh, when Princess Mia turned 18, and she graduated from high school, and as you know, when you graduate from high school, life is over. So why <laughs> would there be any more books in the series? And I felt fine with the way the series had ended, um, you know, with her death and everything. No, I'm kidding, she didn't die. She graduated, and, 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 but people kept writing to me and saying, well, what happens after that? You know, life really doesn't end when you graduate. Actually, to me, high school was pretty much some of the worst years of my life, and so I, I didn't, I kind of felt, excited to be able to revisit those years with some another character who actually kind of had a little bit of a better time because she was a princess in high school <laughs> than I did um, and then I felt kind of a closure when the when the series was over but people kept asking well, what happens after that does she get married does she go to college probably not in that order um, <laughs> And what happens with Genovia, the country that I made up. And um, I really didn't have any kind of clear ideas. But as time went on and, and more things kind of happened in my life and, and in the world, I started getting some ideas of things that could kind of happen. And um, then it was 2015. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is a perfect time to kind of, well, I, I actually start writing the book before 2015. But this would be the perfect time to actually put that book out. And um, a lot of things that happen in this book I hate to say it, kind of happened to me. 
Well, not really, because I don't, I'm not the princess of a country. <laughs> and I did not have a royal wedding. But um, Mia has a lot of family problems. If you guys have ever noticed reading the books, she, there's a lot of kind of dysfunctionality in her family. And, and I have a family that's like that too. Um, and I think that's very realistic. We all have, I think, pretty much all of us have kind of crazy families. And to me, that's what the books were always about. I mean, they were kind of about a girl who rules a country and never knew it. But the way I got the idea for the book was that my mom, after my dad had, had passed away and, and a couple years later she called me one day and she's like Meg you know what um, I'm so happy I finally found someone that I think I can love and it's your teacher which is so great for her but so weird for me your parents don't think about you when they start dating and they're still together and it's still so gross <laughs> by trying to be mature about it. And when I wrote the first book in the Princess Diaries series, which all of you read, when I originally wrote it, my, my friends read it. They were the first ones to read it. And they were like, this is really good, but why is the girl 30? It makes no sense that she's so upset about her mom dating her teacher. <laughs> she wasn't a princess either. And I was like, oh, yeah. So I changed it. I made her be 15. And then it made a lot more sense that she was so upset. Um, and I also made her be a princess. And then there was more of a plot. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of me in Mia. Um, but some of the other stuff that happens in this book is that her dad kind of has a nervous breakdown. And my dad was kind of, he's, he's passed away when I was 26. And in this book, a, a major uh, father influence in Mia's life. Not, I hope this isn't a spoiler. It happens like on the first page. Um, it has already happened in the book, uh, has also passes away, and it causes Mia to make a lot of huge life adjustments. And, and um, when my dad passed away when I was 26, that is what actually caused me to start trying to get my, my books published. Because I realized life really is short, and if there's something you've always wanted to do, you should go out and start doing it. Because, you know, you could have a heart attack on a bus, and your life's over, and there's a lot of things maybe that you never tried. And, and that was one of the things I'd never done was actually try to get something that I'd written published. So as soon as I got home from my dad's funeral, I started sending out all of the books that I'd had under my bed. In those days, we didn't have computers. No, we did. Um, <laughs> but I, I did, I like typed the books that I'd written out. And so I started sending them out and immediately I got rejected. I wish the story ended with me being, well, eventually I did get published, but I got so many rejection letters in the mail, but I didn't care. I, what, everybody's like, oh, doesn't it hurt so much when you get a rejection letter? But it didn't because what really hurts is when somebody you die loves or when there's a dream that you always had and you didn't follow it. So that's kind of what happens to Mia is that she realizes, you know, she's lost someone that she really loves and she wants to get on with living her life the best way that she can. So that's kind of what happens in Royal Wedding. There's another book, and this is also kind of about a dream that I once had. I mean, for real. Which is that I always wanted to write and illustrate my own book, because I was actually an art major in college, which is also what hampered my dream of being a writer. Because <laughs> I was too afraid to take any, you know, to be a writing major and stuff. Um, so I majored in art, because I figured, you know, no, if, I didn't care if somebody crushed my dream of being an artist, because I didn't like art that much. <laughs> so in this book I've actually illustrated. These are my little illustrations. Um, and this is a book that's told from a point of view of a new uh, member of the Royal Genovian family. I'm not going to give away who it is because it's a huge spoiler. Okay, it's Mia's long lost sister. <laughs> and I know there's some people who are like, but wait, her dad couldn't have any more kids. The doctors were wrong. Which actually is based on scientific fact because my dad, um, not my dad, one of my really good friends had uh, testicular cancer. Well, like Mia's dad, I'm just looking through this book because I love these illustrations so much. I hope that doesn't bother anyone. <laughs> There's grandma with her dog. I love it. Thank you. I know I drew it, but it's still a marvel to me. Um, and he was told that he couldn't have any more kids. He couldn't have kids. And then um, it turned out he had a bunch of them. So I was like, what? Dude, you're ruining the whole story. But no, I'm happy for him. Anyway, so this is the exact same story as this, but it's told from the little sister's point of view. Well, let me just tell you, this is an adult book, and this is for readers eight and up, so there's a lot of stuff in here that's not in here. <laughs> that would be 
totally inappropriate. So she doesn't know any of the stuff that Mia's thinking. So in a lot of this, um, Mia's like, oh my God, I'm like, you know, ruining this kid. And this kid's like, oh my God, a limo, mini bar, cookies, you know. Um, because that's, I think, what a 12-year-old would probably be thinking. So I hope that clears everything up. Are there any questions so far? Because if there's not, I may be forced to do a reading, but I'll probably do the reading anyway. Thank God. Yes, what is your question? Since, um, since you did major in art and you do like to illustrate your own work, would you ever consider maybe adapting a princess story into comics? <gasps> like a graphic novel? Right. Wow, that is a good dare. There's actually going to be a, um, a sequel to this book that's coming out next summer that I'm working on right now that obviously I'm also illustrating, so it's going to have a lot of illustrations. But that's something I could definitely talk to um, this publisher about and see what we could do with that. Thank you for putting that idea in my head, because I don't have enough to do. <laughs> um, because after this, I'm going to be working on, well, I've already finished a sequel, a new adult sequel to the Mediator series. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that series. Thank you, because the first book in that series also came out in the year 2000. Um, so my plan was to have that, the seventh book in that series come out in the year 2015 as well. But the way the schedule fell, it's actually coming out February 14th of 2016. So you guys can look for that. But I actually finished it, but we're still in editing. But don't worry, it's still coming out the same day. I don't have the cover yet, but when I do, you guys will see it. Yes? How long does it take you to go from the idea, the beginning, to the end? Um, for, the, for the finished manuscript? Um, it depends on the book and how long it is. This is an adult book, ends up being about 85,000 words, which is, uh, I can tell you how many pages when I look at it. I think it's about 400 pages or so. Yeah, so it's about 425 pages. So for a book about this length, wow, I don't know. I mean, it, can t it takes, you know, a few months usually, quite a, quite a few. Um, a book like this, which is uh, this, these are about 35,000 words, which end up being um, manuscript pages. This is about 100 and, no, it's about 200 pages. So, you know, it's really, the length isn't really the problem. It's kind of the editing and, you know, making it all come together. And when you turn it in, you know, usually your editor wants you to rework some parts unless you're really lucky. I've only had one book that I turned in where my editor was like, it's perfect, you don't have to do anything. And that's out of 80 books. I'm still striving for that to happen again. I don't know what, and I can tell you what book that was. I'll never forget it. It was um, Nic Nicola and the Viscount. I think that's what it was called. Yeah, and then there was Victoria and the Rogue. There, there were some uh, historical teen romances. I don't know why that all just gelled so well. Um, so please read it. And then if you <laughs> figure it out, let me know. Be like, yes, it was perfect um, from the first manuscript. But you, so what happens is after you turn in that first draft, your editor reads it, and they take a while to read it. It can take a couple months, and then they hand it back to you, and you have a couple months to, to you know, usually, to redo it. And then obviously from there, it usually takes about a year for it to come out. So it's a long process, and that's why a lot of people have this perception that writers make so much money, or, but yeah, it's a really long time before you get the money because when you get an advance, it's not really an advance. You get part of the money. And then when you um, turn the rest of the book in, you get a little bit more money. And then you don't get the rest of the money till the book actually is out on the shelves. So everyone's lying. <laughs> when you see that somebody got like $17 million, they didn't really. They will maybe someday, but anyone else have a question? My gosh, so many questions. Yes? How's the mentality go from going to writing an adult book into a the same kind of version of the story, but to a young kids. How do you go back and forth between the two different voices when they are so different in age? Well, for one thing, um, you have to be really aware that your readers of these kinds of books um, probably aren't, especially for a mid, this is called a middle grade, so this is for readers eight and up. They and their parents really don't want to hear so much about kissing or really any kind of romance. So you just, that is wiped out. What they really probably most want to hear about are f fight friends and fights. <laughs> because I get so many letters from fans of these kinds of books. And also I wrote a series of books called Allie Finkel's Rules for Girls. And the letters that I get from these readers of these kind of books are all about, you know, I want to hear about her fight with her best friend. Because that's the kind of stuff that they're going through at, at that age. Um, a lot of it's about, you know, 
it's not really mean girl stuff because they're not really being mean, but they're just trying to figure out who they are and, and where they're going and, and what, why their best friend hates them now, but she liked her yesterday. Um, with this, the, it's more about, it's also kind of who I am and where do I fit in into the universe because we're all wondering that and what, what is my place here and why, you know, why is my family so weird, which they're also wondering because we're all wondering that, but there's also an added um, kind of romance component and also some very, you know, more serious, there's serious stuff going on in here, but, but with this it's a little more serious, you're ramping up the seriousness. And also you can use swear words, <laughs> which I enjoy very much. Princess Mia doesn't use them so much because she's afraid somebody's gonna find her diary and um, then she's gonna get in trouble with the paparazzi for not being very ladylike. So there's not so many swear words in this one, but in my normal adult books I like to put a lot of swear words and then people don't like that. Some people don't like swear words, so you just have to keep that in mind. I always love to put in a dance, too, in all my books, a chance for my readers to get dressed up and go somewhere where they can look really pretty, like all of us tonight. Um, so that's also something that you don't get to do so much in adult books because adults don't go to that many dances. Have you guys noticed? When is the last time you got invited to one? It's only like really when you go to a wedding. Um, kids get to go to a lot of dances in middle school especially, um, and, and then prom. So I kind of sometimes have more fun writing these because of the chance to go to a dance. I don't know why. <laughs> I love it, but it's a little footloose in me. I don't know. So just keep that in mind if you're deciding what you want to write. A lot of chances to go to dances, not so many with the adults. But you can have a lot of murders, which I also like writing about. There's not <laughs> one in here, but that can also be fun. Not, but nobody really can get dressed up at a murder. There's usually blood. Just to let you know. What else do people want to know about? I saw some hands up and then they all went down when I said murder. I'm sorry. It's my fault for bringing that up in the fun, at the fun signing in Miami. There are two questions in the back there, so we'll go with the girl in the tiara first. It's your bad for not wearing one because you'll get to go next. Yes. You miss writing the really smutty novels. <laughs> you miss writing really, there's some smut in here, let me tell you. Um, but we won't talk about it right now because, you know, we're, we're being live streamed. But, uh, <laughs> yes, but I got my start actually writing a uh, very sm oh my gosh, one was actually brought to the yes. I got my start writing, I like to say steamy, historical romance novels under a different name, Patricia Cabot, in case you want to know, and uh, yes, they are available as ebooks now. Um, and I don't know, I like writing them a lot and they're very fun. Um, they, because they were historicals, they required a lot of research. And if you get something wrong, let me tell you, readers of historical romance novels will let you know very quickly. But I'm proud to say I didn't get too much wrong, as far as I know. I haven't heard from any of them in a long time, but uh, I'm sure I will after tonight. So um, it's fun. It's a, it's a, those are very fun books to write. They weren't, it wasn't really appropriate to go into that much detail as I did in those books in this one because of course Mia is writing in her diary and once again a little paranoid that it might get found by someone but she does get into a little bit. Um, but yeah and those books for some reason did not sell quite as well as the Princess Diaries and the Mediator books and, and some of the e-books, or not e-books, but they're books told in email format and they've got uh, text messages. Yeah, those, those, although they got a little kinky. I don't know really how they got so into it while describing sex to people in emails, but somehow they did in those characters. <laughs> Very naughty. So um, I'm working on another one of those as well. So um, yes, in the blue striped shirt. Like the email book you talked about, and the Queen of Babel, and the, mm -hmm. the Heather Wells series. Those are also really fun. Will you be writing any more of those? Thank you for um, saying that. Yes, the question is about my other books for adults, which are the Heather Wells mystery series, which are also called the Size 12 is Not Fat mystery series, and Queen of Babel and the email format books, which I was just talking about. Yes, I am going to be working more. Um, I'm doing another series Another book in the, what they call the boy series, which are these books that I wrote. They all have the word boy in the title. Boy Next Door, Boy Meets Girl, Every Boy's Got One, which is a heart, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot, little controversy over that title. Um, there's a new book called The Boy Is Back, which is going to be out. I don't know when, because I haven't quite finished it yet. Um, that will also, this one will be also have text messaging. I had a request for there to be sext, sexting in it. And I said, I will do my best. <laughs> See how that goes. Um, and yes, there'll be more Heather Wells. And I haven't written one yet, but I started it. It's not done. 
Meg, so have, many things to do. Um, so we have another question here in the back row. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. But beforehand, I have a question from uh, someone watching <gasps> on the internet. Yay! And they want to know, in case I don't know if you spoiler alert, she wants to know what is Michael and Mia's first dance song. Well, I can tell you right now because it's actually in the book. There is Mia and uh, Michael's awesome wedding playlist, which you can also download from YouTube, by the way. If you go onto my website and you go onto the um, the page for this book, goodness, does anyone know what page it's on? And you can tell. Oh, it's on. It's kind of towards the end, I think. I believe it's. <laughs> I think it's Al Green's "Take Me to the River," which Grammar does not approve of. Um, as she said, I thought Michael was Jewish. <laughs> Why does he want to get baptized at your wedding? So, uh, yeah, you can look that up, and then you can read about Grammar's totally inappropriate comments on the songs that they chose. Um, yes, anyone else <laughs> want to know something? Hi, my name is Michelle Thompson, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. You're quite successful, and in the beginning you said that you had a few rejections. Oh, Could you just hundreds, yes. Yeah, maybe speak a little bit on that. Yes. So uh, when I was starting out, what I did was I um, wrote something called a query letter. You may, if you, yes, I see you're familiar with those. Yes. So I was trying to get an agent um, because I felt that that would be better. An agent protects you and, and helps you to get a better deal. So I sent hundreds of query letters to many different agents. I actually used a book. At the time when I was looking, the internet wasn't such a great place to go to try to find agents. So I used a book called The Jeff Herman Guide to Getting an Agent, Editor, or Publisher. And I basically wrote to every agent in that book who was looking to represent authors who were writing the kind of fiction that I was. And um, every agent in that book either didn't respond to my letter, actually sent my letter back with the word no written on it, or every once in a while they would send a letter back to me saying they weren't interested. or but I did get some encouraging replies where they said, you know what, this actually sounds like something I'm not interested in representing right now, but I like your writing, let me see more. Um, so when we were talking about the historical romances that I wrote, um, a few of the agents said, you know, nobody's looking for historical romances in that time period, but if you write in a different time period, maybe I could sell it. So I actually um, just wrote in a different time period, and the agent that I ended up getting did sell, they wanted Victorian. And I was like, I can do the Victorian, and that's what I did. And I wrote a Victorian uh, historical romance, and that sold right away, because that's what people were interested in reading at that time. Now, they always say don't write to the market, because the market will change. Like, if everyone had written vampire romances a couple years ago, that would have been kind of foolish, because obviously it changed quickly to dystopian uh, YA. So it just worked for me, but I think, um, you know, you really got to write what you love, and if you really love it, other people will love it too. But at the time, what I was writing was <laughs> medieval uh, romances, and uh, nobody really loves those. I don't know why, because I do. <laughs> and you will notice that Mia then went on to write a medieval romance. So all I'm going to say is that, thank God. <laughs> for Mia because she managed to publish that book when I could not so you know if you if but I think that agents will recognize talent but sometimes you just have to just find a niche yes follow-up question yeah do you find that they're asking for the writers to do some of the marketing or most oh uh, yes yeah, these and days. in fact in contracts now in publishing contracts it actually says that the author has to have social media accounts and that they have yeah it does um, that they have to do it Thank you very much. yeah um, so just be prepared and um, if you if you don't do it they're not and in fact some of the an author a guy that I know who's trying to get a book published was very shocked to find that they would not publish him only because he didn't have a social media present right now so, so start building one right away if you don't have one. I'm sorry to break the bearer of this bad news. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sure. Yes. Where do you get your inspiration from? Thank you for asking where I get my inspiration from. I, I don't know. <laughs> That's a question I always get, and I wish I had a better answer. I just love to write, and I've always loved it since I was, as soon as I learned how to write and I started reading books, I thought that was such a great, thing and I wanted to do it and I don't know why and I don't know why I still want to do it because it's so hard 
And but you know, I just love it, and I don't think I would be really that good at anything else. So I still do it. But when I need to find an idea for a book, like when I feel like writing and I, I have a little um, notebook that I write whenever I think of an idea, and I get a lot of my ideas from the, the, reading the newspaper. Because my parents always got the newspaper at home, and I always read it, just I don't know why. I like to read the comics. And then sometimes I'd read other stories that were near the comics. <laughs> And they were probably very inappropriate, but sometimes I would read them and I would think, you know, if it was a mystery or something, I'd think, oh, I bet I could solve that. And then I would start writing the story, like Nancy Drew. I love Nancy Drew. So I think that I still get a lot of ideas from the um, comics, and, I mean, <laughs> the newspaper. And I was always interested in princesses. I loved Star Wars. It was my favorite movie when I was a kid. And I loved Princess Leia. And um, there was always a lot of news about princesses of other countries like Monaco. Princess Stephanie of Monaco has my same birthday, so I think I was probably part of it. Not that I thought I was a princess, but I wanted to be. <laughs> so maybe that has something to do with it. What else do people want to know? Way in the back, yes. Um, when you switch the format of the book, like you did with the Avalon High, like what goes into that or why yeah. do you do Very that? detailed questions. What goes into the format of Avalon High, what do you mean? Like you switch, like, the first book is like Oh, I see what you're saying, because Avalon High started out as a first person regular book, and then the, it was made into a graphic novel. So at that time, I was approached by a company called Tokyo Pop, or my publisher was approached by a company called Tokyo Pop that does not exist anymore, I don't think. And they were doing graphic novels, and so they asked if I wanted to do more books in the Avalon High series, but as graphic novels. And they um, gave me a few artists um, and asked me to pick ones I liked, and at that time I was I didn't say, well, I could do it because I'm an artist because I had so many book contracts um, I didn't think I wouldn't have the time, so I picked the one who ended up being the artist for that for those graphic novels, and we worked on a story, we, and she storyboarded it, and um, that's what that's what happened. But it was very different. It was actually more like doing a screenplay than doing a book because it was all I I had to write the dialogue, and she did the drawings. So it was very different. And I've written screenplays. I did the screenplay for the movie Ice Princess. I don't know if any of you saw it. That was, uh, it was so horrible. I hated doing it. I loved the movie, like the way it came out. But writing a screenplay is very different than writing a book because, well, obviously when you're writing a book, you know, you put in all the descriptions of what the people look like and what the places look like. But when you're writing the screenplay, it's mostly just dialogue. And you really got to show. Um, you can't tell. And I love to show, which is very bad. Don't do it. You should try to. I mean, tell, whatever. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's Miami, I love it. OK, thank you. Oh my gosh, you guys are so lucky to live here. Those of you who do, I hope none of you have traveled super far to get here. And if you have, thank you. And I'll try to make this much more intellectual right now. Yes, with this next question. Inspiration for love, did it come from actual experiences that you had? Like, you know, a lot of the times the love interest, like what That's a great question. Did the inspiration for the romances in my book come from real life experiences that I had? Or, like people or people that I know. Um, so you're kind of asking, are the heroes in my books based on real guys? That's what you want to know. Yeah, well, yes, they are. Um, yes. And then the next question I always get is, where can I meet them? <laughs> um, I, you know, yes, they are. And I think there are a lot of people always want to know, well, where are all these guys and where you meet them? And they're sh a lot of them are just shy, and they're wondering where they can meet you. Sometimes the guy authors that I know who have guy fans asking them, where can I meet girls? I'm always like, we should get together and trade our mate, have like a big get-together so your fans can meet my fans. And then, you know, we guys, because I, I don't know what's going on, because I think that the, um, the guys that I write about are um, guys that I knew in high school and college that I met them in classes and at parties. I met my husband at a party, and a lot of these characters are based on him. And um, some of the really bad guys are based on my ex-boyfriends, <laughs> so I'm just going to say. And um, I'm, actually, my lawyers advise me not to, to stop saying that because <laughs> you never know. Um, some of the stuff that did that happened in this book with um, some certain ex-boyfriends that pop up in this book actually really happened. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's amazing how many of them want to write books now and want me to read them. No, I'm kidding. That's totally not true. Um, yeah, that is true. Okay, <laughs> what else do we want to talk about? But I think that it's really important to know that guys are just as shy as, as we are. 
And so, you know, if you see a guy sitting there um, not looking at you, it may be because he's, you know, too shy to say hi. So just be friendly and outgoing. And uh, I know it's hard, but because they, they want to say hi. Most of them, except the serial killers. Those are the ones you need to worry about because they're the ones who are going to come up and say hi. No, I'm kidding. That's not true. That's, that's save that for the murder books. Yes. Wait, oh, there's, oh, Tiara first, obviously. Go ahead. Uh, made into a movie as well? Is, oh, that's such a good question. I don't know, is it? That's what we all want to know. No, um, I hope so. But, you know, nobody tells the writer anything. So we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. I really want the uh, musical of The Princess Diaries. And that's what I have been working so hard towards. Thank you. Yes, a Broadway musical of The Princess Diaries that we can all go to a Sunday afternoon matinee in New York City or even here in Miami it would be awesome. So I've been pushing and pushing for that. And then the next thing I know, there's all these rumors it's going to be a movie. And I was like, that is not what I said. <laughs> Thanks a lot. So I don't know, because I don't know what happened to the musical thing, because that was the last I heard. And now they're like, no, it's going to be a movie. I'm like, where's the musical? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> so I don't know. I have no idea. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. But if anyone asks you, musical, OK? <laughs> musical. It wouldn't be that so cute. OK, now, yes. Do you like to write like, one, focus on one book at a time, or do you do I work on one book at a time, or do I? Obviously, I work on multiple books at a time. I think I've already talked about like five books I'm working on right now. But right when the book, right before the book is due, I really start working on that particular book, so I can get it in on time. So yeah, but I kind of dabble around until then I realize, oh, this is serious. I better get it in, and then I and then I really work on that. So, yes. Back to the movies. <laughs> Back to the movies. Wait, yes. Okay, back to the movies. How much input did I have on the Princess Diaries movies? I did not have any input, but the producers, who the producer of Martin Chase, who's a wonderful person, actually Whitney Houston was the producer, which nobody realizes. Um, God rest her soul. Uh, Deborah Martin Chase was her um, was the main producer, and she would call me all the time while I was still working my job. And I was, uh, you know, I hadn't quit because I didn't think they were really going to make this movie. And she kept calling me and saying, you know, Meg, I have some news about the movie. And uh, the main thing sh that she called about, which were the main changes. And the main one was she called and said, you know, we have this actress who we really want to play the grandmother in the movie. Um, but to get her, we really have to kill the dad. And I was like, why? <laughs> this... That's horrible. And she said, well, I know, but we, what we'd like to do is kill the dad, and that will raise the stakes for me to have to take the throne, and we can give this actress all the dead dad's lines. And I was like, well, who's this actress? <laughs> and she said, well, it's Julie Andrews. You might have heard of her. And I was like, kill the dad? <laughs> So that's why in the movies the dad is dead and it's very confusing to people because he's alive in the books. I am going to give you your book back, by the way. Um, but if you look and if you get this book, which I highly recommend, um, you can see the family tree of the Genovian royal family, which I drew, by the way. And here's Mia's dad, who's very much alive. And um, here he is. Here's Mia, who's his daughter. And then he... Um, maybe had an affair with this beautiful uh, lady pilot and there's this little girl down here so it's very confusing to people who only saw the movie they're like what's happening how is he not dead it's julie andrew's fault no she's amazing i love her she knows what she did okay so that's what happened no and i got to go to the premiere and meet everyone i'd already met anne hathaway because she does the books on tape she did the first three books on tape she's amazing and uh, i went and saw her in the little they make them go i swear this is like a little studio about this big where they have to do the books on tape which is why i will never be doing a book on tape and they have to sit there and read like I mean, I knew they had to read the whole book, but I was like, I wrote it. It's okay to skip parts. Like, it's fine. <laughs> it's all right, but they don't let them. They have to read every single word. I mean, I knew that, but I didn't know that. And she, poor Anne is in there, and she's got, like, she's hugging a pillow, and they made her drink um, Rose's lime juice. 
she had to drink it because she was speaking in a microphone and when you um, pop your peas, I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but that was something I found out that day that she was doing that. But when you drink Rose's lime juice, you don't do it as much. I was like, this is torture for this poor girl. I don't think I'd seen the movie at that point. Um, and so then when I saw the movie at the big premiere, um, she came up to me afterwards and she was like, do you think I did a good job? I was like, yeah, <laughs> you did a good job. So she's amazing and it, it, the whole thing was just so fun. Um, the second movie, obviously not based on any of the books. So I don't know what they're gonna do if they do a third one. I'm just like, musical, what is the problem? <laughs> Solved. So we'll see. I know it's very hot in here, so I don't know um, how much longer we wanna keep up with this. Do we have any more questions off the internet? No. They're just, or we can just do ones from here, and then we can just start signing books so you poor people won't melt. All right. I know. Any final questions for Meg before we wrap up the show? Here's one over here in the second row. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. For Airhead, would you consider it sci-fi? The book Airhead, that is a series about a girl who uh, has a terrible accident, and when she wakes up from it, her brain has been transplanted into a supermodel's body. Talk about summer reads <laughs> that you should try. Um, and a tragedy that I would never want to have happen to me. Okay, so, but she, you know, still has her same problems even though she's a supermodel. So, what was the question? <laughs> oh, do I consider it sci-fi? Well, since they haven't come up with a way to do brain transplants, it is sci-fi, yes. Although it doesn't, it's not sci-fi like it takes place in, in space. But yeah, it's, it's like a medical sci-fi. And then, you know, some, she uncovers this incredible, you know, kind of financial, well, it's not a financial mystery, but it is a huge mystery. So it's really different from like the usual book. It is. What happens? What happens? <laughs> I know, that's what I asked all my friends. I was like, do you think I should, I have this idea, should I do it? And they're like, do it, oh yeah. I don't know. Well, you know, I started writing it and it just, kind of that's I read the paper that's what happened I was reading the paper about all this stuff going on and I was like I'm mad I'm gonna write this book um, and so yeah sometimes so I, I have like a, a anger problem and when I get angry I found a good way to get out my emotions is to write and I've always done that I had, a di I had diaries and I used to write about all the people that I hated at the time that I hated them and then it, I just stopped you know that would help me get through it and so I, was, I guess I think I was probably angry about something when I wrote that and I don't remember what it was now because I got it all out <laughs> what do I think it was I was probably I think I was angry at corporations for something yeah because that was a big it was all about corporations but I don't remember um, there's a show now called Mr. Robot I don't know if you guys have started watching it but I think it was like the same kind of they obviously stole it from me I'm, sh I'm sure they read Airhead so I but then I can never remember afterwards because people are like what was your inspiration for whatever book it was and I can never remember because I got it all out in the book so I think I was really mad about something too when I wrote this book but now I can't remember what it was but I think it was actually the uh, European refugee crisis <laughs> if you read this book there's a lot of references to it but it is appropriate because you know they're not handling it as well as I would if I were the ruler of those countries okay one last question authors or books? Oh, that's a very good question. Okay, this is embarrassing. I don't read in the genres that I write because I find, I know a lot of other authors who do this because it's just, it's like if you work in the food industry, you don't eat, yes, there's someone nodding, you don't eat that food because you can't because you're too involved in it and they're my friends. So I don't really read their books and I know they don't read mine, but we all love each other. So my just generally favorite books, I like to read mysteries. Because I do write mysteries, but um, they're not hardcore serial killer mysteries. My, the Heather Wells mysteries are a little bit lighter. I read hardcore serial killer mysteries. It's so embarrassing to admit. Because people are always like, what do you read? And I'm like, well, right now, I'm reading Michael Connelly, uh, something where there's a guy, uh, like the doll maker is killing all these women and making them into dolls or something. It's horrible. It's so sexist and awful and I love it because it's nothing to do with real life and it could never happen. And it's, it's like listening to um, that kind of horrible rap music that you never want to be caught listening to while you're running and it makes you run faster because you're like, yeah, and you're saying these terrible things and then you realize you're saying them out loud and you're like, oh my God, nobody heard that. Those are the kind of books I read because they have nothing to do with what I write. And I know I will never copy 
you know, in inadvertently that voice into my writing. So that's the main thing that you don't want to have happen is that you, you know, subconsciously. So does that make any sense? I am never going to start writing about the doll maker, <laughs> serial killer, and how my <laughs> princess Mia has to go out and catch him. <laughs> Guess she's not going to do that. You guys have been so awesome. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. All right, so a note to our internet audience watching at home, there is still plenty of time for you to call the number on your screen, and we can ship the books to wherever you are in the U.S. free of charge. For those of you here in the house, we have Royal Wedding, as well as from the notebooks of a middle school princess, and many, many other of Meg's titles for sale in the front room over there. She's going to be signing here at the table to the left of the podium, and this has been so much fun. Let's please give Meg Cabot another hand. Thanks very much. Thank you, Meg. Now, whose book was you? Okay. All right, we're probably...